Hi everyone, today's video is how I did Betty here in pastels. Before we start, I just want to mention I'm in the process of starting a Patreon channel, so if you would like to see projects like this, much slowed down with in-depth, thorough voiceover, step by step, up to three hours long, then drop me a message or head over to social media and drop me a message over there and um, I can pop you some details for that. That's like I say, that's just in the process. I'm just getting ready to um, have a content. So there's already a library there for people who uh, subscribe to Patreon. So like with 99% of my portraits, I do the background first. The reason for that is I like to make sure that I overlap all those details of the fur, those really strangly bits of hair onto the background and once you put your background in after your subject you've then got to rework your subject to put these details over the top of your background so I always prefer to put my background in first and with the portrait itself and the subject I usually typically start with the eye Betty's eye here was covered with a curl that overlaps over the eyebrow that you can see there um, but it is still normally where I would start now my reasons for that is the soul is in the portrait, it is what makes that dog that dog. So if you do some part of the other part of the portrait that you're happy with and then you don't quite get the eye right, I just find the portrait won't be quite the same. So I do typically start with that first. So I'm using a mixture of Carbofello, Pit Pastel pencils, Derwent and Caran d'Ache pencils here. The Caran d'Ache pencils can have little nuggets in, so I do only have a few of the colours that I use the most. A few browns, the white. I have the black, but I don't tend to use it as much. I use the Carbofello one the most. So what I'm doing is I'm blocking in where my basic darks and lights are, and then once I've got those in place, I'll then go on top and work those areas, adding details from there. Each layer you add slightly lighter than the layer before. Now, as I say, my Patreon videos will be significantly slower, a lot of real-time sections. Most of it is real-time and considerably slower. So even the parts that are fractionally sped up, you can still see how I'm using the pencil, exactly the amount of pressure that I'm putting on to get the desired first strokes that I'm after. And I explain all that through each step, through each pencil stroke that I make when I'm doing something different, I will let you know and I'll tell you exactly how I'm achieving that finished detail, that finished look. But you can see from this that I basically, I am blocking in where my main shapes are. So I've got in that basic curl over the top of that left eye. Once I'm happy with where my general shapes are on that side, I'll make a start on the right side. So I decided to carry on with blocking in the shapes before putting in the right eye. And that was purely because I'd already had the sets of pencils for this top section of her fur out in front of me. And exactly the same for the ginger little part of her eyebrow there. Now again, when you're drawing black fur, it's not just typically black. There's lots of purples, blues. So when you're making your black shades, add any of those colours and it will help to achieve a much darker, richer black tone. So this portrait was A4 size, which is about 8 by 12. And for that, this is a full body portrait. So it's quite, I've had to fit you know shrink her down in order to fit this in on this portrait I've still been able to get a suitable amount of detail but if you are going with a full body portrait I personally would try and go up to the a bigger size maybe an a3 so a 12 by 16 type size that bigger amount that larger amount of space just gives you that much extra you know the space allows you to fit those tiny details in as you can see, I'm still fitting in fur direction details, but they will obviously not be as um, sharp as they could be purely down to the smaller area that I'm working on. That being said, this is still realistic. You can still get a good amount of detail on this size, even with a full body portrait like this, where obviously allowing for the full body makes everything else smaller. Her face is smaller compared to doing a head and shoulders type on an A4 back on a A4 portrait. So just bear that in mind if you are doing anything of this similar nature on this similar size. So you would have seen with my other videos, I really like working on small areas at a time. I find that it's far quicker. Although it appears that it might take longer, I find it actually doesn't. By breaking it down into small sections like this, you don't ever get 
overwhelmed you don't sit there and you think oh what am I going to do next and that time when you're feeling daunted on a project is the time that is often wasted because you just don't know where to start if you do have that and I I know how that feels because that is how I felt when I first started just work on a small subject on a small part of it you saw what I did I worked on the left eye the left eyebrow once I'd got the part above that done I then went over to the other side I then worked on the bridge of the nose now I'm working on the orange section next to it so break it up into really really small sections and it really will help so for this I've put down a basic mid-tone and this just enables me to add my highlights on top and then as you can see what I'm doing here I've then gone in with some subtle darker shades to reinforce those lighter areas even more often if you feel like you're not getting your brights bright enough it's because the darker layers underneath are not dark enough make those layers darker and your highlights will automatically become more vibrant and more bright so over on my patreon channel i will be making some focus in-depth videos for instance such of a dog's nose where the whole video will just be that study from start to finish so that you can see the whole process so but as you can see i put my darker colors down first and then i build from there i always typically pretty much 100 percent of the time put in the nostrils first that is because if you get the shape of the nostrils wrong or you get them in slightly the wrong place one slightly higher or you know closer together you will not get the shape of that dog's nose right so i often put the nostrils in first just so that i've got the basic shape and i know then where i need to block my colors in around it so for most of the redder tanner sections here i've used my derwent pastel pencils and that's because they are they do have some really nice you know the yellows and the oranges that i've used and this and the subtle red here are really nice and because derwent's pencils are very soft they blend together really really nicely so that is why i've used that on this section here another reason why i like working into small sections is because it i feel that i've achieved more if i look at this portrait at this stage you don't stay at the ugly stage for too long I find if you do everything in one layer you'll often feel that you're not getting anywhere and it looks terrible because every portrait goes through an ugly stage and if you're always stuck on that ugly stage for you know a day or two I feel it would make you feel deflated like you're not getting anywhere so that's another reason why I like to work in small sections and I look back at this at this stage and think yep that already looks like that dog I've got a nice amount of detail there already and then I'm all ready to you know to move on to the next part. So when I'm doing spaniel ears in particular, what I'll do is I'll block in where my darker shadows are and where my main highlighted curls are. That is so that I don't lose where I am and I'm sort of mapping out my reference photo based on the very basic shades of the ear. So once you've got your lights and your darks in, like what I'm doing there, you can rework it, add your mid-tones on top of your darker shades and then you know reinforce the shape of the curls in each layer that you add thereafter so in my uh, much slower videos i talk about how important the base layers are and i i really do think that they are so important it makes your life so much easier if you block in your base layers accurately don't just put one solid color down pay really close attention to your reference photo i think it's really really important because if I just put down one solid layer and then try and put your details on top, it will not be as three dimensional. If you get your base layers in accurately with differences and subtle tone differences between your lights and your darks ready for your detailed layers on top, you're that much more prepared to sharpen your pencils and get ready to put those detailed layers down pretty much straight away. Now there are different levels of you know, the detailed layers that I add. You don't I don't always go to a really sharp pencil straight away because I like to use my really sharp pencils for my very last one or two layers purely because they will get you the finest details that you can get so when I'm adding these layers like what I'm doing not necessarily here for the whiskers but when I've worked on the first once I've got my base layer down and then I'm trying to add some detailed on top in the ear section for instance I'll work with semi sharp pencils so I'm not overly worried if they are super sharp but as long as they're not overly flat that is often what I will aim for for my next three or four layers after your base layer 
So for Betty's portrait, she was actually perched over the groomer's table and obviously we didn't want to incorporate that into the portrait. So I had a little play with some different reference photos that I got from a free reference photo site. And I actually thought, well, seeing as she's got her paws perched over something, let's make her, you know, put a brick wall there, a really nice brick wall, and then change the background so that it's scenic, which is why we went for a basic blurred green and blue to replicate grass and sky. So by adding elements like this to your artwork, you can make something truly unique. And that's why doing portraits is really special. You don't have to, and now you can, if you wanna just copy that photograph as it is, I, I do often do that, that's absolutely fine. But sometimes there is a reference photo that calls for something to be a little bit different. And this was certainly the case with Betty's photo here. When you are changing elements like that, obviously make sure that your light source is the same in all of your photos. That's really, really important. The light source has to be the same on the brick wall as it would on the subject. Otherwise, it's clearly obvious that those two photos were never taken together and at the same time. So on this section here, you'll see her legs are narrower than her body. So there's an even smaller section to work on, but you still want to follow the direction of the fur. So pay really, really close attention to your reference photo. It is really important. Now you don't see it on these videos because they are sped up. However, every single time on my slower videos, you see me lift up my hand. You know, I'm not drawing at that moment in time. I'm with my hand glanced up, not putting any pestle on that paper at all. It's because I'm glancing at my reference photo. Now you should be looking at your reference photo probably more than your drawing because you want to make sure that you are following it as accurately as you possibly can. It is so easy to think I know what a dog's paw looks like, I know what a dog's ear looks like but you have to make sure it looks like that reference photo and often our brain of course you think you know what an eye looks like but you don't, you have to follow your reference photo especially if you're working with commissions because obviously these markings, like on Betty's paws here, they have to be in the right place in order to make this portrait look like that dog. Because I knew I was a lot of this was black fur and the grey and black tones on the stone wall, I went with the blue pastel mat. I think it works really well for black subjects like this if you're drawing out black fur. But again, the warm, the dark grey, that would also have worked. I don't usually typically like working on the white. But sometimes if clients want just a pure white background, obviously that does call for that. But it's obviously a risk of the whole smudging thing. But as you can see, I do use glassine under my hands. So touch wood, I've never had any instances where I've smudged anything. But because I use the glassine in the way I work, I am really careful like that. So onto the stone wall, it's pretty much the same as before. Starting off putting a base layer down, getting your mid-tones in. Once I've got those in, I then went through and added some darker tones. Now what you want to be achieving with something like this is the texture of the wall and not just the tone and the colour. So make sure there's lots of variances in your lights and your darks. That is what's going to make this texture of this wall look like it's real. You don't want anything to be flat and you want it to look like that grainy gritty look. So by mixing the differences in the darker areas and the mid-tones and then putting some subtle highlights on top, I'm not talking about stabbing the paper and dotting it, but you do need to create those dots in order to get the grittiness effect. But it is still with a light hand. You don't want to be stabbing at the paper because obviously that's not what you want to be doing. But they do still need those really small dots to create that texture. Now, sometimes if you want to create texture, but you, it doesn't call for those small white dots, but there is still texture yet there, use the texture of the pastel mat to your advantage. With a really light hand, hold the pencil on its side and run it across. That will create, it will just grip the very top part of the tooth of the paper and automatically create that texture without you overly needing to be precise and it's a much quicker technique. But this stone wall didn't really call for that. You can see I went back through on that top rock, the top stone there with my lighter Karen Diosh pencils and that's to add the subtle highlights. Now with something like this as well, you can see there's some green in there as well. So that is, you know, there might be some moss or something like that grown on there. Pay really close attention to those differences in colour. So what makes this stand out and look really real is how dark I've got the shadows between the gaps in the wall. Capturing these as dark as you possibly can and making this pop by achieving your contrast is what will make your portraits appear that much more realistic and not flat. 
One of the most common questions I get asked is what colours do I use and can I list them? Now the reason why I don't, and I go into in depth in this in my videos, in my Patreon videos, but I don't want people that don't have the same sets as me to think that they can't achieve the same outcome because that is honestly really not the case. You can create the same outcome with different supplies and you can layer pastels in different ways and achieve different outcomes. You might use exactly the same colours that I recommend, but if you layer them slightly differently with maybe a little bit more pressure to put more pigment down, blend various layers together, you may get ever so slightly a different colour and tone. So if you see me use a green, you see me use a grey, pick up something similar that you have because we all see colour differently. What I see as that shade of green, you might see slightly differently. Also, that dog would be taken in slightly different light and the colour of that fur would be different. So it is just about mainly due to practice as well, being confident in what pencils you pick up. And really, with pastels on pastel mat, because it is so forgiving, if you make a mistake and you put a wrong colour down, no big deal, you can go straight over it. The biggest thing if you're worried about what colours to pick up is focus on your values instead. Make sure that your lights are bright enough and your darks are dark enough. That is what will make your portrait appear that much more realistic because you've got it's not flat looking. There's nothing worse than seeing a portrait with no contrast but the colours are 100% accurate because it would still look flat. By achieving this contrast and getting these darks darks and lights light that is what will make your portrait go to the next level in looking that much more realistic. And once I've got the whole subject in, I then go back and I add the whiskers and I tweak things. The whiskers are the very last thing to go on usually just because they overlap everything else. So you don't want to have to be working around them if you put them in a little bit too soon. I hope this was useful. Um, I do appreciate if you give the video a like, it does help. And if you want to subscribe, that would be amazing. And hit the bell button if you want to get notified of future content. Um, and I will next be uploading a voiceover here on Saturday. If there is anything in particular you'd like me to cover, then pop it in the comments below and I'll add it to my list of uh, videos to make in the near future. Also, as I mentioned, if you are interested in my Patreon channel, drop me a message or an email. It's all linked in the descriptions below and then I can pop across some more information on that for you. Bye.